Welcome to another video from DIY Daily. We've got a full step-by-step -step guide today showing you how to fit a new timing belt and water pump on this 2005 Ford Focus. Now this one's a 1.6 petrol and this is in quite a few of the other Fords and it's pretty much exactly the same procedure um, for the 1.25 as well. Basically the same engine, just a little bit smaller. Um, on, if you're doing it on a different model, the main bit of repla the replacement will be the same. There might just be a few differences taking the engine mounting off and uh, bits like the coolant tank and stuff like that. So. I'll just show you quickly what we've got. Um, if you check out the links in the description below, I'll put links to all the kits and all the parts and um, all the special tools as well and where you can get them from. So, um, But we've got a kit with a water pump. The cam belt doesn't actually run on the water pump, but the water pump, uh, this part of the bracket, sits behind the cam belt. And if you need to replace the water pump, you can't actually replace it without taking the cam belt off. So it's always nice to do it at the same time. But basically, we've got a new water pump. comes with some bolts there for it. We've got a new tensioner, new cam belt. It comes with some new bolts. It is a floating crank pulley on it, and the cam pulley is a floating as well. So and it comes with a new crank bolt there. We've got a couple of auxiliary belts to fit. I'm going to do them at the same time. And then we've got a special tool for the uh, for timing it up. Again, I'll put a link in the description below to where you can get one of these from. They're fairly cheap, but this is to lock the two cams. And they say the uh, you've got to make sure not to take the crank pulley out without uh, without putting the pin in because it is a floating pulley. So there's no keyway in the pulley, uh, no keyway on the shaft. Um, but there's a, a few uh, pins there just to lock the crank shaft. Um, but I'll show you running through that step when it comes to it. So uh, just for now, just going to get it up in the air. Just get the driver's wheel off and I'll run you through every bit step at a time. Obviously using two poster ramp today. It's not too bad a job to do without a ramp. Um, just makes it a little bit easier. If I want not using it, all I do is just jack it up just on the driver's side quite high here. Just to give you a bit of room behind the wheel. Um, but uh, other than that, you can, uh, it's not too bad a job to do. Um, but yeah, we'll just get it up in the air now. Get the wheel off. Um, we'll get the coolant drop down, dropped out. And then I'll just run you through each step going from there. So we've just got the wheel off quick. Um, there, there is normally an arch liner in here. Um, on this, this the guys actually just bought this one and they've been fitting some power steering pipes. Um, you can see it just under there. And they've actually took the arch liner off and left it off. So it is just off at the minute. So I can't just show you removing that, but basically all you'd want to be undoing is the bolts around this front section. And you might just need to undo this underneath it. And then you can just simply uh, it's just if you get this front section off, you can just pry it back out of the way, that's all. But all we're looking to do is just get a bit of access to your belts. There's the centre crank pulley bolt that we're going to need out. And then we're going to be taking these two auxiliary belts off as well. Now they are stretchy belts and you do you can get these, you can just, you can get them off without. Uh, obviously I'm replacing these so I can just cut them off but you do get these little kit. Again I'll put a link in the description below to these but you have one that's uh, one to remove them and one to refirm and it just guides the belt on as you um, turn the pulley round with like a socket and ratchet on the pulley there and so on so uh, but we'll just get the I'm just going to get these belts I'm just going to cut them both off to start with um, and that's pretty much all the work we'll be ne needing to do under here then we'll lower it down we'll put a jack under the sump we'll just put a block of wood on there as well and then we'll just take up the um, start to take up the load of that and then we can get the uh, get the engine mounting off so Right, we are just going to put it up in the air once more, yeah. Um, just forgot to say about just locking the crankshaft off. It's just a bit easier for us to put it up in the air while it's still on the ramp. So, But next step now, we're just going to pull the header tank up. It just goes on some push clips there. Some, well, just on some sort of guides there. So you just pull that up. Just going to move that out of the way. Um, we're going to take the top rock. We need to take this top, top rocker cover off to get to the way you put the timing tool on the back of the cams. So at the back edge of the cams here, that flat plate goes in there on the back edge of the cams but I'll show you that to, when we get there. All we're going to need to do is take this cover off. We'll just take the um, take the spark plug leads off 
we'll just pull all that all four of them out of the way just got some bit of pipe with a bit of a few cables just to move out of the way there's just loads of eight mils all the way around the outside and a few in the center there it's really easy to get off we'll just undo all them take the rocker cover off and take this top cover off the cam belt there and then we're going to put a, um, a socket on a ratchet at the bottom turn it over and we're going to get the um set the timing up so and what we'll also do is just take number one spark plug out and that's how we're going to find top dead center to make sure we're in the right place um, but we'll just get this stripped down and i'll run you through that next bit got most of them eight mils out now just uh, forgot to say as well just on this back corner it's got it has a little 10 mil nut on top this is a stud for the eight underneath and it just holds this little bracket for the lambda sensor wire in there but the bracket does also have another bolt just on the bottom there it's another 10 mil just have to get from a bit further down um, but we've got all the eight sun done now we should be able to get this rocker cover out and turn it up and out of the way So that's the rocker cover out of the way now. Forgot to say, just when taking the plugs out on these, um, it's always worth just having a quick look. I just noticed as I pulled the plug out there, you can tell, I could just notice it was covered in oil. And um, what happens on these Fords, it's quite common, the rocker cover gasket starts to leak on the center here, and it just seeps into the, uh, around the spark plug. So if you take your plug out and it's all oily, um, you're gonna need a new rocker cover gasket. Um, but also another big issue that these Fords suffer with is uh, sometimes you might take it out and it's really rusty inside here and these core, core plugs start to leak and just fill the cylinder centre up there with uh, water so if it's all really rusty in there chances are your core plugs leak and you'll need to get a couple of core plugs as well um, but I'll put a um, I'll attach a video at a later date with uh, replacing them core plugs and I'll put the core plugs in the link in the description below as well so um, but just showing you on the back of the cams these, uh, you can just see it's the two little grooves in it, one there and another one there. And that's where our tool basically runs along the flyer and slides into them. All right, now at this, uh, now we're at this stage, I'm just gonna run you through timing it up. All we're gonna do, we've just got a long flat bladed screwdriver. You could just use this or any sort of thin rod really. All we're gonna do is put it in cylinder one or someone else just turns the engine over with a ratchet and we're going to wait for piston one coming up and that's tdc basically so um once we're at that stage there these the two grooves should line up and we should be able to slide the oh, there's a locking pin there we should be able to slide that pin in on the uh, camshaft and when that's on there we'll get, we'll uh, send it back up in the air and show you the bolt that you need to remove and put the crankshaft locking pin in so just to start with you just need an 18 mil socket just to go on the center crank pulley bolt there probably what a long um quite a long extension on it it's just a bit easy if you can bring it outside the wheel arch turn that over and we'll check for tdc uh, you really want two people doing it just got to be a bit careful with your screwdriver or your rod whatever you're using you just want you don't want it um just put that in there quick you just want to hold it nice and straight while it's coming up and down just to make sure it doesn't uh, cockle over and snap off road like that so uh, but we'll just start turning the engine over now so we'll just see got the socket and ratchet on there so it's starting to come up now I'll just get up a bit more and just wait till it gets to the top. Yeah, a bit more. A bit more. A bit more. Yeah. 
Yeah, and then you can feel that's just on the top there now. And basically, at that point, the two lobes there now should be nice and level across. And we should be able to slide the tool straight in. So, yeah, you can just see that uh, the tool there's just slid straight in the groove on both of them. So, and now that that's there, what I'll do is I'll just, um, I'm just going to take that out now because I just do this to make sure that we're definitely locked in the right place on the crankshaft when we go up. So just slide that out of the way for the minute. Basically, all you need to do is make sure that this pin is locked in on there and you're locked in the right place on the crankshaft. But we've just sent it up in the air now. I'll just show you the bolt we need to take out to lock the uh, crankshaft off. All right, so with it up in the air, if you just come around this side, you've got the drive shaft here, just around this right hand side of the block there's a little 10 mil bolt there and this is just like a cap just a little cover for the locking pin so you just need to take that out don't need to worry no oil or anything come out so i just undo that and get that out of the way uh, just to show you quickly as well obviously there was a choice of uh, three pins it was a choice of three pins to use. It just depends on the exact engine code, but just know from experience with this one, I've done quite a few of these now. Uh, this is the one we want today. So, um, But basically, it doesn't actually go into a hole. We just put it in, and then the actual cam just turns and locks onto it. So all you want to do is just wind that in. You can get it in past the uh, drive shaft. It doesn't have to be mega tight. Just wind it in. Just finger tight, just till it bottoms out. The reason I've left the um, locking tool out on the top is just to uh, just a bit of a precautionary check, really, just to make sure it is definitely in the right place. So, but uh, now that that's in there, I'll put the socket on here. If I just turn that over, that should just lock onto the tab there. Yeah, you can feel that's just hitting the actual locking tool, so we know that's bang in the right place. Now that that's there, we're going to drop it back down and uh, just put the cam locking tool in and then we can uh, get to work getting everything else off. So. Now that it's in, all we're going to do, you can just, um, there's a couple of grooves out there, depending on the engine to where they fit. That's actually cut out if the, t if the thread's a bit closer. You can just put a bolt in just to secure it in place. So all I'm going to do though, is just, uh, again, a little, we can use that thread there and we'll just put one in and clamp it in the middle. Just keeps it nice and secure while you're doing it. So, so it's just got that nice and secure now. So next thing we're going to do, we'll get the jack underneath the sump Take, take the weight of the engine, then we can start to get this bottle out of the way, start undoing the engine mount, get these top covers off. Just saying quick there, just put the jack with a lump of wood on it just to protect the sump. Now I'm gonna do is just lightly jack it up, just to take the weight of the engine, just so that I know, as soon as we undo these bolts, the engine's not gonna drop down too, too much here, so. Um, but we'll get this bottle out of the way now, get all the bolts off, uh, get them size there, I don't know if they're 18s, just holding the engine mount on. We'll get these out of the way, start taking that top cover off. Right, we're just going to take the cover off now. And just see a few few more bolts there, another few eight mils all the way around. So we're going to get as many of them off as we can. And um, the water pump pulley needs to come off as well. It's got some 10 mils on there. You might need a big pair of grips on the um, actual pulley to undo that. But these, um, the alternator don't fully have to fully come off. But you, we do need this bracket out of the way. And to get that out of the way, we've got to take these bolts out here. So we're going to, have to get them out as well. But you take. Take that bolt out, take the nut off there, and then use uh, an e-torque socket to get the draw the stud out. But again, run you through that as we do it. So.
I'll just show you quick. There's a 10 mil bolt just holding the power steering reservoir on there that just took out to get it out of the way. Just pull that out of the top and then just locate in that hole there. And these two 15 mils, sometimes this nut just spins off. So if it does, you just need knee torque socket um, just to pull the stud out. So it's actually just wound it all out with that. So, but that's uh, that's as far out of the way as we, we need that. So with them two out of the way, just need to come down, just undo this little bottom bolt for the alternator as well. So that uh, allow us to fully move that bracket out of the way. It's just got the alternator out of the way now. I mean, just for the, normally I'd just leave that out of the way, but for the video to make it all a bit clearer for you, and it does just help, I'm just going to take off, just take the alternator fully out of the way, because all I've got to do, just a little clip there to get off, and if you take this cap off, there's a, I think it's a 13mm nut underneath it. Um, one thing, if you're going to take this out of the way, you do need to be, um, well, just to be safe, just disconnect the battery on one of the terminals first, because this will be a live 12 volt feed, so... Now I'll just disconnect the battery, get the alternator out of the way. It'll just make it for a bit clearer video, so. Right, so we're quite stripped down now. Next step, all we need to do is just get this uh, little engine mount bracket off. Just got some 13 mils holding that on. One there, another one there, and this one there, which is why we needed to remove the alternator to access that. So. If, uh, and it's just a quick easy job to remove the alternator, you might as well get it out of the way, it just makes everything a bit easier. Um, we're going to get this bracket off now, then we're going to jack the engine up slightly, but I'm just going to drop that back down a little bit again. And then we're just going to take the bottom pulley off, obviously we're using a, quite a powerful air gun to buzz the bottom pulley off. Um, so it's not too bad leaving the, the crankshaft locking pin in, but if you, if you are going to do it um, with a ratchet, you, you really want to um, take that pin out. Get, Put it into fourth gear, get someone to put the foot on the brake as hard as they can and then you'll be able to crack it off that way. But with a powerful um, buzz gun it's not going to damage that crank locking pin we've put in. So um, we'll get these next bits off now. I'll just show you the belt as well. You can just see, I'll show you how uh, it's definitely ready for one. Quite crack, quite uh, cracked there, I don't know how much longer that would have lasted. So, And obviously the water pump, you can see the water pump here, obviously the cam belt's not running on it. But this bit of it is all tucked right behind the back of the cam belt there, so that's the reason we're replacing it all in the same job, so. Uh, so we've got the crank pulley bolt out, it's come out quite easy on that, but it is actually quite tight on the shaft, so we're just going to get an hammer, just give it a bit of a light tap, see if we can uh, free it off at all, so a few light taps might just, uh, hopefully I'll just uh, get that off. So basically the, re the, the reason it's real crucial to get the timing on these is because they're a uh, they're just a floating pulley there's no keyway on this shaft so if you was to take that bolt out and that was to spin without the um pin in you'd just lose your timing straight away so. it's pretty tight this pulley so all we're going to do is just spray a bit of um, penetrating oil just on the centre around the... Uh, it seems to be the outer pulley that uh, normally gets seized on the shaft. So just spray a bit of penetrating oil and just give it another few taps. We're using a copper hammer just so it doesn't damage out and uh, it will eventually come. Just uh, You can, if you really have to do, try with a bar and sort of hitting it at an angle to tap it off. But it's a bit of a last resort really, you don't like to... You can, if you're not careful, just damage the... It might just chip and damage the pulley. So. I'm going to try it this way first. Normally it works, just takes a little bit of time. Rather than being rough and damaging it, I'm just giving it a good soak there. Every time you tap it, you can see it bubbling a bit. And a bit of rusty sort of um, penetrating oil comes back out. So we'll just leave that soak in five minutes and then we'll give it another go.
paid off just leaving that to soak in just a few more wax and it's just slid off so we can just see it's just a straight through shaft but it does just get a bit uh, rusty and just seizes on that so so just pays to just leave it soaking for a good while and give it a few taps and just keep leaving it to save damage and anything um, but now that that's off and get the bottom cover cover off it's just got a few more eight mils on it uh, and then we'll just get the belt slacken the uh we'll undo the i think it's 30 mil for the tensioner there get the belt off and then we can get the water pump off so we'll just uh, run you through that in a minute So that's the tensioner off now. Here's a sprung loaded tensioner. The new one will be locked into place for using these pins, but I'll show you that when we're putting the, the new one in. You do need to make sure that you locate the um, tensioner in the right place. But again, when we put it all back together, I'll just run you through that. Now that's there, we can get the belt off. And just quickly, while the belt's off, and just make sure as well. Obviously, that, I'll just show you that pulleys. Yes. You see that's completely free spinning on there. So. No keyway on it, so. If we get a good look at the belt there, you just see how badly perished that is. So. It probably wouldn't have lasted too much longer, so definitely what it's doing. Get it out of the way now. And all we'll do next is just drop the, um, you could drop the coolant out through one of the um, coolant uh, pipes on the radiator or something like that, but all I'm gonna do is just put a catch tray underneath just undo all these eight mils that are holding the water pump on and I'll drop the coolant and just catch all that. So and we'll just whiz these out now. Pumps come straight off that time, but uh, sometimes they're a little bit tight. If they are, just need to give them a light tap and it'll come off. But so the surface is pretty clean here, but I um, just want to give that a good wipe down with a rag. If it is, uh, if it has got any gasket or anything like that on it, you might want to give it a bit of a uh, scrub with some emery cloth. But I'm just going to give that a good wipe down with a rag, ready for the new gasket. Now, the gasket on this one's actually come off with a water pump, so just see it sits on there and just goes over the dowels on the pump. So. Uh, but all we'll do is just click that quick clean up now and i'll run you through refitting the water pump and run you through the um, torque settings as well the torque settings for these outer bolts are uh, 10 newton meters right, so we've got the new pump here now we've just sat the gasket over the uh, over the dowels there i just nicely held it in place while we um and can just run all the bolts up all i'm going to do is run them all in lightly and then i run around in one at a time using the torque wrench, using a digital one tonight. Don't have to use a digital one. Um, if you're not using the torque wrench, it's just, it's quite a light nip really, 10 newton meters. So. Um, didn't show it on the video, but the only thing I did do is just give it all a quick clean up with a rag before putting it back on as well, so. Right, so we've got the new tensioner to fit now. You can just see it's got a uh, locking pin through it. We're going to leave that in until the belt's on. Just going to put the bolt through it and just, just run it up, just finger just finger tight and then back it off slightly. And I'll just show you where it locates as well. It actually locates in, fits into the water pump. There's the bolt hole for it. And you just need to line up a small bit on the tensioner 
just locates into that square hole on the on the um, water pump there. That's where that's so it's nice and loose now. And once we've got the belt on, we can just pull that out and put the tension on and then nip it up. And again, when we're ready for that, I'll just run you through the torque setting as well. Now they do come, the kit comes with new bolts for the camshaft pulleys. You might open to get away with not taking them off tonight. Most of the time you can, uh, but if you have to take them off, again, they're a floating pulley. So you might have to just remove them, put the new ones in there, just leave it slack while we put the belt on and just pull it around and then you can nip them up. We just need a tool to hold the cam wheels, just to hold them in place while you nip it up, that's all. So um, obviously the bar's in the back there locking it still. So um, but all we're gonna do now, we start rooting the belt on. We're just going to pull the belt around all the pulleys and we're just going to leave it tight on this side and leave the slackest bit on this area here for the um, tensioner to take up. So we'll just leave that round now. Also, when fitting a new cam belt, they do sometimes have arrows on for the direction. Um, but if it hasn't got arrows on, you just want to fit it so that the right end's reading in the direction the engine's turning over. So I'm going to fit this tonight. I'll be fitting it in this direction there. We'll just get that loop round. And so all I've done there is just loop that round. One thing you need to make sure is it's quite taut across here. You can't really get it too wrong though. You can just see where that is now. Just set that and it's just in the in the ribs. It's pretty solid. Whereas obviously down here there's quite a bit of slack. But with this being a floating pulley on the bottom, it makes it nice and easy. You ain't got to get this section real taut. Obviously you can see as you tension it there, that just pulls that up. So. But now it's in that position, we can just simply pull out the pin. And just see straight away that's put the tension on there an automatic tensioner so again really easy to do and now we're just going to um torque this bolt up there at 30 mil for the tensioner and it wants to be 25 newton meters and just do that quick Right, so we've now got the timing belt on, everything's tensioned up. Um, few, just next few little steps, just a bit of a precautionary thing, um, just to make sure it's all timed in the right place. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna put that little bottom plastic cover on, just the lower um, section of the timing casing. And um, once that's on, we're gonna put the outer crank pulley on and just wind that up by hand and just make sure that the it is just on the stop of the, the um, crankshaft pin tool we've put on there. Once we, once we know we're there, we're just going to um, buzz it up with a gun. We'll get it nice and tight. And then we're going to remove the locking pin from the camshaft. And obviously the pin on the back. And then we'll paint mark it. And we'll just we'll put a little paint mark on the crank pulley. We'll just turn it over two full rotations of the crankshaft. And once we've done that, the pin should be on the, on the lobe. And the camshaft guide should just line back in there as well. And that just proves to us 100% that the timing's bang on in the right place. We know we're not going to cause any. Also, turning it over in, with everything um, in that position, as long as it doesn't make a contact, we know that it's not hitting any valves and not going to do any damage. So. Uh, but we're nearly there now, I'm starting getting built up. So, as you can see, it's not too bad a job to do on these little Fords. So just check quickly that we're on the uh, located on the pin there and we'll just put that bar back in quick then we'll just buzz that to bottom pulley the bottom pulley nut up the bolt so 
take the bar out. Now we're going to do next is just take that um, take that crankshaft pin out the back. Right, now that we've done that, just going to put a little paint mark just on the uh, pulley wheel against the body there. It only needs to be a rough guide. All it is is you get you get two full turns of the crankshaft to one of the camshafts. So if we turn this over twice now, it should be in the right place, all timed up. So we'll just spin that over quickly and just just check our uh, marks, make sure we're bang on. So we've just about got to uh, two turns there. I'm just say we're slightly off. So if we just go to where this lines up on the camshaft first. Yeah, back, back slightly. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Right, so we've just lined up now where our tool nicely slots into that. And we're just going to uh, just whip the that one in the back there. All we'll do once we've done that is just pull this out and just give it a wiggle on the crank. And just make sure we just hit on the web of that. Now that I've done that, I'll just come to this and just make sure that just slots in there as well. And that's how that to just slots straight in. So it's nice and in, nice and in line. So now that I've done that, we can take that out. Take our pin out on the back, um, just put the little 10mm bolt in there, the little cover cap, and just lightly nip that up again. And uh, we know that the timing's absolutely bang on, so we start rebuilding everything back up now, getting all the covers on, refitting the alternator. Um, we'll just whiz through some of that, some of that, uh, some of these next steps, and then I'll just run you through refitting the alternator belts with the, um, with the stretchy belt tool as well. So as you see, it's not too bad a job really. If you want to check out the description below, there's links to all the torque settings, all the special tools used, all the parts and the cam belt kit and everything. So um, some links to some other videos as well. Just quickly cleaned up the uh, the face of the head there where the rocker cover's going on. Uh, but I'm going to have to order a new rocker cover gasket for this one as well. Um, from where it's leaking and uh, so once we get to the end of the video I'll just run you through and um, bleeding the cooling system as well Right, we've got most of the top oil built back up now. Um, we're just gonna got the water pump pulley to put on now and put the engine mounting on. Obviously we put the mounting on then drop it down into place and then we'll have a few little bits to do underneath. And um, while we've got some bits to do underneath we'll put the header tank back into place and just fill it up with coolant just to give it a chance just to start letting some of it run through. So. Thank you. 
That's them on. I'll just check them again in a minute once the belt's on and it grips it a bit. But the proper torque setting from is 25 newton meters. And if you're going to torque them up, you'd have to just grip the pulley with a big pair of grips. And sometimes I don't really like to mark the pulley if I can help it. So that with the air ratchet or battery ratchet just gives them a good nip. So I'll say I'll recheck them when the belt's on and it's gripping it anyway. Uh, we'll just drop the engine mount on now and we can send it back up in the air. Right, so now at this stage, all I've done is just leave the header tank full of, full of uh, antifreeze there. Just going to send it up in the air now and just finish off the last few bits underneath. Just putting that cap back on the um, where the timing pin goes uh, and then we'll run you through bleeding it up. Next job now, we're just going to fit these two auxiliary belts. So both of them are stretchy belts. Um, so. They are a little bit awkward to fit. Um, you've got to sort of pull them round. Obviously, we're going to use this tool there, which you just sit on the pulley and the belt, and as you, you're going to put your socket on the crank again and wind it round. Um, I'll try and film it while we're doing it, but it'll be a little bit awkward because there'll be two of us in there. Um, this, so, I mean, you do get a proper one that comes with a genuine auxiliary belt from Ford, which are a bit better. Um, but to get the inside one on these is a bit, bit awkward. It'll work well on the outside, but... We'll just have to try and get the belt looped round and then just keep turning the engine over and it'll just it'll be quite tight but it'll pull the belt over so i'll just try and get it as best as i can on the camera okay, let's sort of show it all right so what i've done at the minute i'll just loop the belt round all the pulleys and then the guide tool is just set around the uh, pulley there and it just sort of holds it on So we've just got that belt on. That was mega awkward to do. I actually broke the uh, broke the tool doing it. Um, but I found the best way to do it was we had to loop the belt round, have it on everything barring the main crank pulley, and we have a bar down from the top. Uh, sorry, bar coming through here. I'll just show you the. Um, using quick. And um, basically, I had this bar through there like that. And then you, where you can pry off the chassis and against the belt there while turning it on and just kept turning it over and um, eventually got it on but it's mega tight to do i'll probably put a link in the um, description below to a different tool that's, that's a bit better they're not too bad when they ain't got two pulleys on but with, without having twin pulleys on there mega tight so we'll just run the alternator belt on now this should just be a bit easier probably be able to, hopefully be able to do this without the tool so all we'll do is loop it round um, the pulley and just stretch it on. So just do that quick now. Yeah, the alternator one, because it's an outside pulley, is dead easy. Just put it round the uh, put it round the um, the aircon one. Sorry, put it round the aircon pump. Just started it on the crank pulley and just held it on just where you cup your hand, just where you start turning it over and just let it bite and pull it on. So it's just that other one that's mega awkward. So when you've got them on, just make sure they're located nicely in all the ribs. If you don't, if you start it up, it might just uh, ride one of them out and damage the belt. So now that they're on, um, obviously we can just, I like to find some screws to put this arch liner on, so it was missing earlier on. So I'm just gonna whip the arch liner on then we'll drop it down, just run you through bleeding it up. Just going to bleed it up first actually rather than putting the arch slider on just to just to finish the video off here what i'm going to do now you can see the coolant levels drop quite a bit while it's been uh, left in there bleed the system up all we're going to do is start the car up when you start it up just have a good look at your belts make sure they're running nice and true uh, but we'll just run it up and we'll leave it running for about five minutes with the cap off that should be enough to bleed it up but it's always nice to just crack these two pipes off here and just 
just draw them off it and just make sure the water's returning there's no air coming out of there just guarantees you a bit that it's uh, circulating nicely so obviously when you've um while you are running it up as well it's always just worth having a quick look underneath to make sure there's no um no water leaking anywhere so uh, but as and again just have a good glance around just make sure nothing looks amiss when it's running up so we'll strike it up now Both belts running nice and true there, uh, so we're just going to leave it running now. So, so I say, it's not too bad a job to do on these cores, really. I uh, hope the video has helped someone. If you like it, give it a quick thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. If you're doing this on a Fiesta, um, I put a little uh, bit about it earlier on, but you probably just want to take the headlight out, it's really easy to get out and then it just gives you a bit more room for the alternator belt. So. Just leave the video uh, just running while we finish it up. What we've done, just turned it off now. Just take these pipes off and just leave them off till you get a bit of water coming through. You might need to just hold it down below the level of the header tank. So we've just done that one and we'll just do the second one. So then to finish off, we'll just leave it running with the cap off for five minutes. Once you've left it overnight, just check the level in the morning again, just set it back to the max.